have more faith in to deliver? Is it Kawhi or LeBron? Well, absolutely it's LeBron James. Of course I'm going to have more faith in LeBron James than Mr. Load Management himself, Kawhi Leonard. Now, obviously, load management isn't applicable in this particular situation because he's had about five months off. Even though he hasn't looked great during the preseason, it's no big deal with that. We understand those are exhibition games. That don't mean anything. Kawhi Leonard is that dude. We understand that. But he ain't no, no three-time champion. He ain't a four-time league MVP. And even though he's the reigning champion, okay, the bottom line is I can make a legitimate argument of very very legitimate argument that that was my default and luck to be quite honest with you but that's a story for another day I would like to focus on LeBron James the dude that's in his 17th season age 35 obviously a, phen a phenomenal physical specimen averaging 25 and 10 leading the league in assists being the dude that is that dude for the Los Angeles Lakers making Anthony Davis look like an MVP as well not to say that Anthony Davis needs that much help because we all know he's all world but in the end when you see what LeBron has done particularly as it pertains his leadership and you recognize the load that he's going to have to carry with Avery Bradley electing to sit out this renewed season obviously Rajon Rondo out for the first few weeks uh, because of his thumb situation if I remember correctly Contavious Caldwell Pope J.R. Smith Alex Caruso and all of these guys what are they going to matter if it's not for LeBron James greatness facilitating things for them so I'm going to go with LeBron in this particular situation I think Kawhi is going to be buffered by the help that he has on the Los Angeles Clippers, LeBron will be asked to carry a heavier load. That obviously is a very daunting task, but if anybody's up to the task and anybody can handle it, it would be him, particularly in comparison to Kawhi Leonard. If the question is, and it is, about LeBron versus Kawhi as it pertains to faith, trustworthiness, and reliability, I'm going with LeBron James. And I'm going with Kawhi Leonard. And that is no knock against LeBron. LeBron turned himself from a guy who looked unsure in the clutch early in his career, who really didn't want it, right? Like, you think about that series um, when he was in Miami against Dallas, and he was playing hot potato with the ball. It's not just making the right basketball play. He didn't want the responsibility. Partly that's because Stephen A, for his career, he shoots 73% from the line, which isn't awful, but... Not great either. Kawhi is up something like 85%. He's not as scared at the end of games to have the ball in his hand on the stripe to take it to the hole. And partly it's because LeBron had these enormous expectations. He had to be the best ever from the very beginning. But whatever it was, Stephen A., LeBron James had to evolve into a clutch player. And to give him credit, he became very clutch. As great he is as he is normally, when it matters most, he's even better. But Kawhi Leonard was born cold-blooded. Born that way in oh, the league. Stop even it. As a puppy. What? Stephen A. Cold-blooded. What? What do you mean born with it? Kawhi, what are you talking about? I'm not saying I'm not saying Kawhi was born a star into the league, but he's always been cold-blooded. How many 22-year-olds do you think could a coach could go up to and say, you're going to guard a prime LeBron James and try to beat the Heat with the big three? And we're relying on you to guard that guy. How many 22-year-olds go and do that? And uh, then uh, by the end of uh, that uh, series uh, are uh, also uh, dropping 20-plus points a game and wind up winning that a rhetorical MVP question? of that do I series. Get to how, how, how many players are doing that? Go ahead. Well, first of all, I don't know how many players would be in a position to do that because the bottom line is how many players would have Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and a future Hall of Famer first ballot surefire Anyone in, in the Duncan, finals. The greatest power forward in the history of basketball. The fact of the matter is, is that, excuse me, we need you to be the face in front of LeBron James, who, by the way, averaged 28 that series. I'd like to remind everybody about that. It wasn't like LeBron James fell off but the bat. But they gave Kawhi the MVP. I wonder why. Game. I, 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 listen, they gave him the MVP. I'm not trying to say he he didn't do a decent job against LeBron James, but they had LeBron to get LeBron wasn't a good enough team And when you, you looked at Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, what, man, uh, excuse me? Excuse LeBron me? wasn't on a good enough team for you? LeBron made well, he a was on a good enough team, team for me, but so great that people got mad at him for putting it together. But yeah, sure, Kawhi, you mentioned the other great players well, on Kawhi's team, but Kawhi got the MVP. But Stephen A, it doesn't stop there. He was a puppy. He was still finding his way when he won finals MVP. Then he turned himself into a legit MVP regular season. He was candidate. all right. 
and then in the playoffs had the, one of the greatest postseason runs in the history of American team sports. Shut down Giannis, was the MVP of that series. Beat Embiid and Simmons with one of the greatest clutch shots in the history of basketball and topped it off with a finals MVP. And now that dude is 28 years old in his physical prime. Great two-way player, clutch, elevates under pressure. And LeBron is 35, okay? And, and unlike LeBron, Kawhi never had to learn how to be that clutch player. He was always cool under pressure unlike at LeBron. the end of games. Always. Unlike LeBron, it couldn't be Max because he was never asked to be that guy. The, when, he, when he was in Martin, San Antonio, yep. it was Tim Duncan's team with Manu and, 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 and Tony Parker. So he wasn't asked to be that guy. He was the fourth wheel. So you could get away with a lot when there are no expectations placed upon you, especially on the offensive end of the floor, and you just get to defend. I'm not trying to take away anything from Kawhi Leonard because I know he could ball. He's a superstar now. And even back then, he was a big-time defensive player. But in the end, think about the offensive responsibilities that were on the shoulders. There pretty much was none. So as a result, he benefited from that. Then when he was the star last year in Toronto, missed 22 games because of load management, averaged 39 minutes of games in the postseason and showed up. Give him credit for that. Lucky bounce against the Philadelphia 76ers in a game seven when Jimmy Butler was giving them a rough of his money. Goes up against, goes up against the Greek freak. And the Greek freak is surrounded by a bunch of puppies that looked scared because they were in a conference finals. And the Greek freak himself still devoid of a jump shot, was being picked up by half court because Nick Nurse elected to throw a multitude of bodies by and who? the scale and the stymie him from coming down with, that he led the way, but it wasn't just him. Then you go to the who finals. Who was picking Not up only half court? No Kevin Durant, but no Clay, Clay, no Clay Thompson either when it counted. I said it before and I'll say it again just to remind our audience, if Clay Thompson had been healthy, even without Kevin Durant, they still would have beat the Toronto Raptors. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.